we start with an easy problem, and then we make it hard by asking, you know, how do we make it dynamic? So here's an easy problem. Check whether a set of parentheses is well balanced. So uh, you probably know this one. So for example, we say that these parentheses are well balanced. Uh, however, these parentheses are not. Uh, you know, this is no. This is yes. Um, and you know, if you have something like like this, maybe it's also no. And if you have something like this, you know, where there's not enough closing parentheses, it's also no. Uh, so how do you solve this problem? Like, you always have to start with like how do you solve like, the basic static problem? Do you remember how to solve this? Use a stack. Yeah. Okay. Well, a, a stack. That's even overcomplicating this for. Uh, there's, you, you can do it even easier. Yes, conceptually it's a stack. You just put, you know, parens on a stack. When you see a closing paren, you pop from the stack. But in this case, because uh, there's only one kind of paren, um, you know, and it, the only thing that can ever be on your stack is some number of closing parentheses, so all, or rather some number of opening parentheses, so all you really need is a count. Uh, so you will just keep a counter of how many open parentheses you have. Uh, when you see a clo an another opening parentheses, you will add one to that count. When you see a closing parentheses, you'll subtract one. Uh, if you would ever take the counter negative, then you can immediately reject the string. Uh, even if in the end the total would have been zero, you still have to reject. Like for example, this case is invalid, even though there are equal numbers of opening and closing parentheses. So uh, the conditions are basically that counter should never fall below zero, and additionally, the counter should be zero at the end. That extra case is needed for this, right? Because here we get one, two, three, two, one. And this is unbalanced just because we didn't get you know, zero at the end. So if you get zero at the end and your count has never fallen below uh, zero, that means that never was there a paren that could not be matched, and now also all opening parens have been matched, which means it's valid. So, um, very easy process to do sequentially, right? Like, no wonder this is an easy lead code question, or at least I think it is. Uh, but, uh, you know, the problem you won't find on lead code is uh, how do you do this dynamically, or at least I don't think you will find that on lead code. Uh, so what does dynamically mean in this case? Well, in this case, we're going to be given, you know, like a string of a certain fixed size. Uh, for sake of argument, it's not going to like grow or, or shrink. Uh, so for example, let's say initially we are given this string. Okay, so here we are. Everybody understands the problem. Uh, well, the initial problem. Uh, these are just array indices. So we're basically given an array of these characters or, you know, booleans or whatever, however you want to denote them. So, you know, here's our array. Hmm. I guess for, yeah, I hope it's clear enough. I guess friends kind of look a little like lines. But, yeah, I, I hope it's clear enough. So, you know, in this example, uh, the initial output would be true. Because, because these are like well matched. So this is actually outputs true initially. But the idea is we should be able to update one of these and we should be able to very quickly recompute what the correct answer is. Like without doing the whole process all over again. So again, uh, we could just record what we did with, uh, you know, during the process. Like we, uh, remember during the process when we saw this, we, we kind of went like, okay, start with zero, then one, zero, one, two, three, two, one, zero. So we could keep a record of these numbers. And for example, if we update this paren, we will just say, oh, okay, this paren changed to this. <clears throat> So, okay, so I'll just start over here, and this will be three, and this will be two. Oh, no, uh, now it doesn't go to zero, so I guess it's false. <coughs> uh, so we could do that. Uh, the problem is, it kind of has the same problem as in the other problem, uh, where 
potentially you will have to recompute a lot of things here, right? Uh, quite possibly. Uh, because what if you update this parentheses, you'll have to recompute everything. Uh, so again, we want to use basically the same kind of structure. Uh, so we want to use the same kind of structure. So we want to, uh, as you know, we discussed earlier with the segment tree. So we want to make a summary here, like, like so. And this overall summary here is basically you know, what we want to look at to find out what our answer is, right? This is kind of the element that summarizes the entire array, and this will have our answer. Uh, the only thing is, uh, you know, we have to figure out how to summarize the impact of these parentheses, right? Because uh, right now these are just Booleans. Um, so, you know, a first attempt might be to kind of characterize these friends as what we were doing on the score before, right? Like, let's characterize this as like plus one and minus one. So we can, we can give that a shot and see what happens. You know, so let's say we started with, uh, Yeah, let's say we started with this structure. Uh, we could just treat this as a summation problem. But clearly, like, this is not going to work out. And so why not? Well, you know, even if we, uh, you know, store sums like this, the problem is, like, sure, we'll be able to ascertain that in the end, the sum was zero. But we don't really know that that really means the friends are valid, right? Because it could be that there was an underflow before you got to that zero. Uh, because the, remember, there are two conditions, right? One is that, like, we, it does seem like we do need this kind of information at some point, right? Because one of the conditions was that the final sum should be zero. When you do these, when you do plus one for an open paren and minus one for a closed paren, like, the final sum should be zero, so we should be storing this kind of information somewhere. And we should know what that information is at the, you know, top level. So it's not like this is completely useless, necessarily. It's that it seems like we're missing information. Right? Makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is there a question? No, just a comment. Like, like the order, if you have minus one, plus one, then... Yeah, exactly. So the order matters, right? That's kind of the problem. Like, we're not just looking for a sum. The order matters. Like, for example, this order is fine, because this order represents this. But if you just reverse the order, then this is invalid. You know, I reversed it. Uh, well, I didn't reverse this, but I reversed these, right? And this is invalid now. So uh, generally, uh, when figuring out how to solve a problem with a segment tree, uh, you can ask, how would you solve the problem using divide and conquer? And why is like the, why are these things related, right? It's because it's because ultimately, like, what is the segment tree doing here and here? To compute the top level attribute, it's getting some information about what happens on the left side of the array, and some information about what happens on the right side of the array, and then it combines it. So we have to have enough information there to combine. It seems like the problem is, like, this isn't enough information. We don't, we don't have enough information here. And that's actually what we saw in the problem last week, too, with the uh, maximum sum subarray, we found that simply knowing what the answer is for a particular piece isn't enough. We need additional information. Okay, so then how do you solve the problem using divide and conquer? How do you solve the balanced parentheses problem using divide and conquer? Uh, so, okay, so I have some array. Uh, like, forget about segment tree for a second. How do you solve the problem just using divide and conquer? Well, you, naturally, you wouldn't normally, but you can think about how you would if you had to. So you split it into a left and, you, and a right chunk, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, you're going to solve the left and right chunk individually. And basically, what the constraint that you have is uh, this kind of total, like let's call it as like, let's call it sum. You basically want left at the top level, you want left.sum plus right.sum to equal zero. 
And you also want, um, well, on the left side, the solution should have never underflowed, right? On the left side, you should have never gone below uh, zero. So, so basically, let's call, the, like we need a kind of a name for this attribute, which is kind of like, what is the lowest value that the counter ever goes when you, when you run this algorithm? So what algorithm we're referring to, I'm just referring to uh, start, at, you know, for a particular, for a particular subproblem, we're going to start at the beginning, and for every open paren, we're going to say plus one. Well, we, we start at zero. For every open paren, we add plus one. For every closing paren, we, we say minus one. Um, and then the sum at the end is basically like where that counter is at the end. Um, but then additionally, there will be a, uh, I'll call this low point. Low point is basically the lowest that count ever goes. So low point is always a negative number or a zero because you started at zero. Um, but it may be lower, right? So for example, for, for this problem, sum is zero. One, two, one, zero. Uh, but low point is also zero because you went one, two, one, zero. You never went negative. On the other hand, this problem is different. Here sum is also zero, but here low point is negative two because you want negative one, negative two, negative one, zero. Make sense? So I will call that low point. Now why is low point relevant? Because on the left, basically I have that left dot low point should be greater or equal to zero. Well, it can, it can never be greater than zero, so it's zero. And that's the, and the reason is, is because if on the left I have a low point of like negative two or negative one, that means I underflowed. But on the right, low point does not have to be this condition, right? And the reason is because if left, uh, if by, if left dot sum is not zero but is like some some positive number, let's say left dot sum is five, that means that by the time I'm done going through the left, there are five open parentheses. So now the the parentheses on the right are allowed to underflow by a value of no more than five. So essentially, with these two attributes, if we capture these two attributes from each subproblem, the sum and the low point, we can uh, figure out whether the overall subproblem violates the condition or not. Uh, how so? Uh, because, well, let's write the combination formula. So. So let fold be the solution to like the fold problem that's been split into left and right. We can write that fold.sum equals left.sum plus right.sum. Yes? Uh, I mean, this one's pretty obvious. Um, and then what is, uh, what is uh, fold.low point? Here's kind of the slightly less obvious one. What is the low point of the fold? Well, the low point can either happen on the left or on the right. If it happens on the left, then it has whatever value it has on the left. Like, for example, if the counter reaches negative 3 here, then uh, that means that you know, it reaches negative 3 overall. If, if like relative to this piece, I mean. If when you're processing this piece, you, you, you know, the counter reaches a value of negative three, that means that here the full value, which will have started at zero at the beginning of the left array, will also reach this value of negative three. On the other hand, if for example you reach a value of negative three here, then the value relative to the beginning of array is left.sum plus right.low point. And so we have two expressions. We have left.low point. And we have right dot low point plus left dot sum. Well, I guess I inconsistently decided to use L and R here, but okay. Um, and which one of these is actually the low point? Well, min. the low point is by definition the lowest point that that counter goes. So it has to be the min of these two. So, if you, so in other words, what we're, what we're really tracking is uh, when you start a counter at zero, we add one for a, an opening paren and subtract one for a closing paren, uh, and you just keep track of the total. Um, I'll get to you in just a second. 
and you keep track of the total, uh, you know, uh, we want to track like, what is the final number you get to, because in the end we do need to check if that number has reached zero. Uh, and we also need to check that at no point does, did the global low point go below zero. And to do that, we need to know what the particular low point was in each of the sub-problems. And, and so the full low point is the smaller of the left's low point, or you, you, take, you start with the left sum, because by the time you're processing, you know, by the time you get to the right piece, you already have left.sum open parens. Um, and then, uh, you know, you have to add right.low point, which is the lowest point that this gets to relative to its beginning. So for example, if you had five open, if you had five open parens when you were here, and right.low point is negative three, that means your overall low point is two open parens. Okay, so, um, so, so this is basically the formula for getting uh, this full, ex the, the expression for a full problem, these two attributes for a full problem, from the subproblems. And then the, what it was the like, overall solution, like true or false, uh, can you, uh, are the parentheses well matched? Well, uh, full dot sum should be zero, and full dot low point should be zero. Uh, well, greater or equal to zero, but it, it, can, it can never be greater because uh, left dot low point is guaranteed to be, well, at, at the top level, at the very top level, left dot low point is guaranteed to be zero. And that's because uh, when you start the left problem, you're counted as zero. But this is not true as you delve like, deeper into the recursion. It's, it's not true that left dot low point is always zero like everywhere in the recursion. I'm just saying at the top level, it has to be that way. Because at the top level, left.low point refers to the low point of this whole thing, and clearly that has to be, you know, that has to be zero. Uh, well, zero or a negative number. It cannot be positive because you started at zero. Okay. Yeah, so this is kind of like the overall solution. And uh, in the end, you just do that check. So this is kind of how you do like the divide and conquer. And what we kind of emphasized last time is, when, uh, is to do it with segment trees, it's really the same thing. Uh, you solve it using divide and conquer, except the difference between, say, just, uh, just solving the problem this way, uh, you know, when faced with a static problem, and solving the problem this way with a segment tree is just in a segment tree you will, you know, record your answers. So, for example, if you started like this, um, let's say, well, let's, you know, walk through the example. So this was our example. So it's clear now that we will keep two numbers. We will, at each point, we'll keep the sum, and we will keep the low point. Uh, so first we have to figure out what the values should, that should be in the individual cells are. So OK, so um, for an individual cell, we should put a sum of plus 1 if it's an open paren, and a negative 1 if it's a closing paren. That part is obvious. What is the low point? Well, if it's an opening paren, low point should be zero, because you start at zero, and then after seeing the open paren, you go to one. So the lowest it ever was is zero. I'll, I'll just put them always as like one, and then the other. Uh, and, and in the case of this, it, uh, low point should be negative one. Because you started with zero, uh, just relative to this cell itself, when you started processing this, it was zero, and then you went to negative one. Uh, so, you know, it looks like something like this. So every, every starting cell will either be like plus one, zero, or minus one, minus one. Okay, so now, uh, and, and now we just have to like uh, compute each of these cells and so on. And conceptually, this is exactly as if we were uh, just doing divide and conquer. Well, here we're kind of doing it bottom up. But it doesn't, you know, instead of, instead of starting here and branching out recursively, we're kind of like starting bottom up and then propagating it that way. But it doesn't even have to be done that way. If we wanted, we could, we could even, uh, well, well, yeah, okay. I mean, I mean, I guess initially we computed, we, we do compute it bottom up. But uh, it's essentially the same operations. So that, that ultimately happens. So what happens here? 
uh, well, we just have to apply this formula to get this. So here we will basically apply this formula to get the solution for this overall chunk. Like this corresponds to this chunk. So what is the solution for this chunk? Well, we can just look at the formula, plus one, minus one, so the sum is zero, which seems correct. And the low point is the smaller of zero, and uh, minus one, plus one, so zero. So zero, zero, which makes sense. This is the correct answer for this segment. The lowest the counter ever goes here is zero, and, uh, and the sum is also zero. Uh, but here, we will get like a sum of plus two and zero. And here, we will get a sum of zero and zero, because this, is this, this chunk is kind of the same as this one. And here, we will actually get minus two, minus two. So here, we have a sum of minus two, and we also have a low point of minus two for this, this chunk. Because uh, we, you know, we went from zero and we got minus one, minus two. And when we combine these, we will get plus two here and zero, and we will get minus two here as well as, uh, well, let's see how to combine these low point values. So left dot low point is zero, right dot low point is minus two plus left dot sum, which is zero. So overall, the combined value will be minus two. And then finally, when you combine it here, you will get, you will get zero. And, and now you really can see how this, like, how this part of the formula works, because because, okay, we're about to get the, so far we have the solution for the left piece, which is this piece, and we have the solution for the right piece, which is this other piece. And the sum is easy. Well, you know, we had a sum of plus two here and a sum of minus two here, so this is very easy. Uh, but let, let's see how this low point is working in action. So this is a valid string, so we expect low point to actually be zero here. Let's see if it pans out. Uh, well, the full solution's low point is the min of the left low point, which is zero. So, so far, so good. And then right dot low point is negative two. So this is telling us that the right side will actually bring the counter to, in it, at its lowest point, the right side will bring the counter two points lower than what it started with. Uh, but since left.sum is plus 2, this is okay because this will be 2 minus 2, so 0. And then the min of all that is 0, and so we, that means the counter never go, goes below 0. And so in the end, we, we, we now get this information. We see that had we solved this sequentially by just sequentially doing the plus 1s, minus 1s, that, that global counter that we have would have ended up at 0. And its lowest point ever would have been zero, which means you never underflowed, and the parens are valid. But now, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it because it's just a lot of, uh, you know, fidgeting around. Uh, but you, you know, you can test how this works. If you say like you update like this value, then essentially that means you will, you know, change this value to minus one minus one, because that's kind of the base value for a closing paren. And then you will have to propagate this update uh, throughout the tree. And you can see what you'll end up with. You'll have to change these values, and you'll see what you end up with. And you know, I'll give you a hint. You know, The sum will be negative now, and this will be negative, which means that your final check evaluates the false. And it's no longer a ma set of matching parentheses. And then you can see what happens. Well, what if you also you know, go ahead and uh, change this one? Then what will happen is you know you'll update you'll update some stuff here, and this will flow through like this, and again here, and then you'll be back to zero zero here. So very nice. I mean, notice how this operation is very far from what you would normally identify as like a binary operator. Uh, normally, like it's not addition, it's not multiplication. It's like the operator is this formula. Like, the, you know, the, the entity being operated on is this pair, like pair of two values. And this is the formula for combining it. And it turns out that this formula is, uh, like, like, it is associative, like you can re-parenthesize re it. It's, it's probably not even commutative, like it's probably not even true that A times B is B times A here. Uh, but it is associative, so you're able to kind of like, uh, sort of re-parenthesize it and use the segment tree to find the answer. And what's more is we didn't really use this capability, 
But in fact, if we wanted to make the problem even tougher, and instead of requiring you to give the global overall solution, you actually had to say, uh, how about the substring from index i to index j, is that valid? Well, you could answer it from the segment tree. You could use the segment tree not just to look at the final node, which is the summary of the entire array, but you could actually even uh, you, you could actually even calculate what the answer is for a range, the same way you calculate what the answer is for a sum uh, in the sum in, in the previous problem we did where there was a summation. So very nice. We can answer all kinds of things about you know what happens in uh, subarray of the array. And we can uh, you know, also know, like overall, is the string well balanced? And we can make updates you know, while keeping this updated, uh, while keeping everything needed to answer the queries updated very efficiently. 